Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with help of Joe. In this video, I am going to introduce you to biomechanics and its core concept that is the kinetics and kinematics. We will discuss about kinematics in depth in this topic. Let's get started. So in this video of introduction to biomechanics we will talk about kinematics and kinetics under kinematics we will talk about types of displacement location of displacement direction of displacement magnitude and rate of displacement starting with type of displacement there is translatory motion and angular motion which are the two types of motion translatory motion occurs in one plane and it does not occur around any axis whereas angular motion always occurs around an axis so if this is the axis the object will move around the axis in human beings translatory motion or angular motion is very rare whereas curvilinear or three dimensional motions is mostly seen in human beings so for example jo has an angular motion over here but this does not occur in a normal human being or a knee flexion that occurs around the axis that is very fixed does not occur in human being if the axis is fixed you can see his flexion is limited only till 90 degree now coming to the curvilinear motion what happens in curvilinear motion is if there is an object a which is moving in this direction like a rubber from here to here it is moving around an axis if this was the axis it's moving around this axis and at the same time it's moving in a linear fashion which is parallel to this plane so this is how the curvilinear motion takes place and in curvilinear motion the axis is called as instantaneous axis of rotation i a o r that is the axis of rotation keeps shifting along with the object's movement whereas in three dimensional movement the object moves in all the three planes that is something like this if this is the rubber if rubber is moving like this and at the same time it's going downward or coming upward towards the camera the axis of rotation over here when the rubber is moving around the pen is helical axis of motion now that we have discussed the types of displacement let us go on to the location that is where the movement is taking place the movement can take place around any of the three axes that is the antero posterior axis coronal axis and vertical axis antero posterior axis would pass from front to the back the coronal axis would pass from the side and the vertical axis would pass from top to bottom to understand planes and axes let us take example of jo in a war so when he is in a war there are archers shooting arrows at him from all the directions so imagine that a arrow comes to jo from front and hits him right at his hip so the axis will be antero posterior axis and the movement that will be occurring is abduction and adduction around this axis this movement will occur in the frontal plane this is the frontal plane and the abduction and adduction is occurring in this plane now imagine that a arrow comes from the side and hits his hip from the side like this so the axis will be coronal axis and the movement that will be occurring will be flexion and extension of the hip joint so the plane will be sagittal plane like this which divides jo into two halves and the movement will be flexion and extension of the hip then the third movement if someone shoots an arrow at him from the top the movement that will be occurring is cervical rotation that is over here like this which occurs in the transverse plane then the three planes are the transverse plane that is this plane sagittal plane that would be this plane and also the frontal plane that would be this plane 
So when we talk about a three dimensional movement, it would be something like this, where there is flexion occurring along with flexion. There is some amount of adduction that is occurring. Normally adduction takes place in the frontal plane. So it's a pure frontal plane movement, but in a three dimensional movement, there is flexion adduction and there is also internal and external rotation of the shoulder. So if you take the humerus, there is flexion of the humerus. There is also adduction of the humerus and also internal rotation of the humerus. So these three movements take place in sagittal, frontal and transverse plane. The axis around which this movement occurs is called as helical axis of motion. Talking about the direction, there is clockwise and anti-clockwise direction which is hardly used. Uh, apart from this, we use flexion and extension, abduction, adduction and medial or internal rotation and lateral or external rotation. So under direction, we talk that this first said there is clockwise and anti-clockwise movement. But this again varies as the person changes his point of view. If the person is looking from the other side, it will be an anti-clockwise direction for him. That's why they came up with another alternative. That is, when the movement takes place in the sagittal plane, this is the sagittal plane and the angle is reducing, it's called as flexion. And when the angle is increasing, it's called as extension. Whereas when the movement is taking place in the frontal plane, and the, and the body part is going away from your body, it's called as abduction. And when your arm is moving towards the midline, it is called as adduction. And finally, the medial and lateral rotation, which occurs in the transverse plane. So medial rotation is when your body part moves towards the midline, it rotates towards the midline and lateral rotation is away from the midline. Going to the magnitude of the movement, this is called as the range of motion, that is how much range the joint covers. For a normal human being, it can go only till 180 degrees. At last, we'll talk about the rate of displacement that is also measured as displacement upon time, also known as velocity. And also velocity upon time is acceleration, that is how much change is happened in velocity in a given period of time. So now that we have learned about the five components of kinematics, that is the type of displacement, location, direction, magnitude and rate of displacement. Let us move on to the kinetics. Kinetics is basically the why behind any movement. What forces cause the movement? For example, if there is quadriceps, it causes extension of the knee joint. As you can see over here, when Joe straightens his knee, the quadriceps over here will contract and there will be extension carried out at the knee joint. So the study of this force production by the quadriceps to extend the knee would be the kinetics. So let's summarize the topic. We talked about kinematics and kinetics. Under kinematics, we talked about types of displacement that was translatory and angular. The combination of both was curvilinear and these movements when occur in three dimensions, it's called as 3D movement. Then we talked about location that is three planes and three axes. Then we talked about the direction of movement that is clockwise and anti-clockwise or flexion extension, abduction adduction and medial and lateral rotation. And also the magnitude that is the range of motion and rate of displacement that is velocity and rate of change of velocity that is acceleration. And at last we talked about kinetics that is study of forces that cause the movement. If you like my content, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. Thank you for watching. I 